But you know what? Diamonds shine brightest when there's dark. Like when, when they put a diamond out for you to look at, they usually use a dark background because that, that brings out all the light. And, and that's what's happening with us. As believers, yes, the world is getting darker, but we can shine even brighter in this world. Amen? And so that's, that's really important. See, I want, I want to talk to you about the seducing spirits of this world because, you know, it's just, uh, it's dangerous. This, this is a dangerous place that we live in. There's a lot of deception. There's a lot, the enemy's trying to squeeze us into his mold and it's not a good mold to be squeezed into. And so we, we're going to be talking about the seducing spirits of this world because that's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to seduce us. And so the spirit of this world seduces mankind to commit spiritual idolatry and worship the God of this world. It's all about worshiping Satan. That's what the world's about. Yeah. It, it may not look like it, but, but the enemy is trying to desensitize us. And, and those who partake of and yield to the spirit of this, uh, to this spirit will be calloused and defiled, have a defiled conscience toward our Heavenly Father. They will be conformed to this world and deceived by seducing spirits. That's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to numb us up. He's trying to callous us. You know, he's trying to operate on us. The, the enemy is doing spiritual operation. Now, anyone here ever go to sur have surgery? Anyone? Yeah. Okay. Or, or a procedure, you know. You don't have to raise your hand, but I'm sure people have had colonoscopies, but you don't have to raise your hand about that. You know, um, and things like that. They make sure that they sedate you. They, they put some, you, you know, you have some kind of sedation. Uh, if it's just something locally, they don't just start doing surgery on your arm. They're going to numb your arm up. Even women who have babies, a lot, a lot of them get, you know, what's that called? A block or something in the back? Just to help. Epidural. 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 Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on that stuff, but, you know, it's to help with the pain. You know, it, it numbs you up. Well, the enemy is trying to numb us up so that he can do spiritual surgery on us. And, uh, you know, he, when, well, you're under. One time, well, one time I, I had surgery on my, on my jaw. I had a wisdom tooth taken out. Hmm. And while I was under, uh, they didn't give me enough. So I woke up in the middle of the surgery. Hmm. And I saw the doctor... And I saw a, nur a, a nurse or someone there. She was literally holding a chisel in her hand. And he had a mallet. And I'm like this going, Rrr. I couldn't even talk, but I could make some noise. She went behind me, and next thing I know, it was all over and, you know, surgery was done. But, I mean, that's, that is the greatest fear. When you go into surgery, that you're going to wake up on the table. You know, I can attest to that. But, you know, when, when you go into surgery... You, you don't feel anything, at least that's the way it's supposed to be. And that's what the devil's trying to do. He's trying to callous us to the point where we don't feel anything. I mean, th there's been people who've gone into surgery to have uh, an amputation, and, and the doctors have taken the wrong one, the wrong limb. Oh. And they didn't know until they woke up from it. The devil is trying to numb us up to the point where he can do surgery on us, and, and, and do damage to us, and we don't even know what's happening until we wake up. And then here's the, here's the problem. The church, not everyone, but a lot of the church is sleeping. Yeah. We're, we've been sedated. We're under, you know, the spirit of this world has gotten in and crept into the church. And it's, it's trying to seduce not only the world, but the church. And so we want to make sure that, that we are not asleep. We're not, we're not sleeping, we're awake. It says in Romans chapter 13, 11 through 14, it says, And do this knowing the time. We need to know what time. Knowing the time that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. So, so what, what Paul's saying here is that even the church can be sleeping. Yes. He's saying it's time to wake up. And that's what, that's what I'm here to declare today. We need to wake up. We need to wake up to what... The enemy is trying to do to us. What kind of deception is the enemy trying to do to this world and to, to the church even? Because, you know, churches are getting 
really infiltrated by a lot of the world. The world has crept into the churches. A lot of, a lot of the mindsets, a lot of the thoughts. There, there, there's progressive churches that, that allow for uh, homosexuality to be open in their church. I mean, even ministers are, are you know, in some churches, they're promoting homosexuality. Well, you're not going to get that promoted in this church. We love people who, who are, are homosexuals. We love them. We'll pray for them. But they, they have issues. They have sin. They need set free. Amen? Amen. We're not going to be agreeing with them. I'm not going to be doing uh, a, a gay wedding. It's not going to happen here. Amen? Amen. And, uh, you know, I would rather not have a church than have to do that kind of stuff. It's just not going to happen. But there are churches that are doing it. I mean, just recently, not all that long ago, they wanted to have where, where you know, people, guys could go into the, to the women's restroom as long as they, they said that they were female. You know? And, you know, it's, see, they call it gender fluidity. I don't know if you've ever heard of the term. But it's, you can be whatever you want to be. There is, you know, God, you know, we know God created Adam and Eve. But the world is trying to say, well, you, you can have Adam and Steve. You know? Or even whoever. Evelyn. But, but you know, it's, that's not what God has done. God has created us male and female. You can't just change it. But, but yet people were having all kinds of surgeries, trying to, you know, you, you can have surgery where, and, and take hormones where you can look like the opposite sex, but you're still the sex you were born as. It doesn't change. Amen? Amen. But, but that's what's being pushed out on us. We need to wake up. Amen? For now salvation is nearer than we first believed. The night is far spent and day is at hand. Right now we're in the night. But the day is come. Amen? Yes. Therefore, let us cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. We need to be armed with the light of the word of God. We need to be armed with God's anointing. Because this is a dangerous world we're living in. There, this, is, this world is in darkness. The Bible calls Satan the ruler of darkness. He rules darkness. And it says, let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk properly as in the day, not in revelry and drunkenness, not in lewdness and lust, not in strife and envy. He's not talking to the world. He's talking to the church. It says, but put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to fulfill its lust. See, we've been talking about looking like Jesus. Amen? And that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to, to, first of all, you have to wake up. He's saying, wake up. Don't be lulled asleep by the world. Wake up. And then get, take off that junk. Take off the stuff that the world's putting on you. And then you can put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We need to be walking is God's representative in the earth. We are His example. We're His ambassador. We are the ones who, who are the light bearers. Jesus said that we are the light of the world. We are the soul of the world. Amen? Amen. And that's what we need to do. But, but you know, a lot of times, the, the, that's what the world's trying to do with the violent, you know, games that, that kids play. They're, they're, they're making them callous to blood. They're making them callous to to violence. They're trying to make us callous to all of these things because that once they numb you up, then you can fall for the great deception. The great deception is the Antichrist. You know, and people in their right mind are like, well, I would never fall for that. But if they can numb down people enough, they'll fall for anything. And so we want to be careful that we don't. That we don't fall for that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18 through 21, it says, observe Israel after the flesh. Are not those who eat of the sacrifices partaker of the altar? So what do you, what do you, the question I want to ask you is, what are you partaking of? Are you partaking of the, the world? Or are you partaking of the things of God? 
We're all partaking of something. What what are you partaking of? We need we need to, to look at in the mirror and say, hey, what am I what am I because whatever you are partaking of, you're at that altar. And you get altar you get altered at the altar. That's where, where the devil does his work. If you feed on the world, you become worldly. If you feed on perversion, you become perverted. And we don't want that. Amen? Amen. What am I saying then? Is an idol anything? Or what is offered to idols anything? Rather, that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And they're partakers of them. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. So he's saying you're going to take, partake of something. You're either going to partake of God's table, you're either going to be a servant of God, or you're going to partake of the devil's table, and you'll be a servant of sin, or a slave of sin, or a slave of the devil. So what are you feeding on? That's the big question. What are you feeding on? In 1 Corinthians 2, 12 through 14, it says, Now we have received not the spirit of the world. We have received what? Not the spirit of the world. But the spirit who is from God. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. These things we also speak. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he receive them because they are spiritually discerned. The devil is trying to make us desensitized so that we don't we can't discern what's right and what's wrong. The, the world says this is right. They, they say, you know, whatever gender you want to be, if you wake up today and you decide you want to be, if you're a male and you decide you want to be a female, you can be a female. That's what the world says. You can't. Or vice versa. Whatever you want. There's no hard rules. And, and, you know, and they take the Ten Commandments out of everything because they don't want anything solid. Whatever you want to do, just do it. That, that's what Satanists do. Satanists do whatever thou wilt. That's, that's their, their, their saying. Whatever you want to do, whatever feels good, it doesn't matter who it hurts, it doesn't matter who it affects. It doesn't matter if it displeases God. You just go ahead and do it because there's no restrictions. Amen? And, and that's not what the Word of God says. See, you're, you're either in bondage to, to sin or you're in bondage or, or a slave of righteousness. There, you're one or the other. There's nothing in the middle. And, and so that's the choice that we're faced with. And the world's trying to shape us in a certain way. The spirit of the world will cause us to love the world and to reject God. If you love the way the world is, you're going to reject the way God is. We're faced with a choice. 1 John 2, 15 through 17 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust thereof. But he who does the will of God abides forever. Whose will are we going to do? We're going to do the world's will, or are we going to do God's will? God's will. Amen. That's why the Bible says, submit to God. Do his will. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. It's, it's as simple as that. If, if you're in bondage to the devil, you can't take authority over the devil because you're, you became his slave. What are, you, what are we feeding on as, as a, a group, as a society? In 2 Timothy 4, 10, it says, For Demas has forsaken me, having loved this present world, and has departed for Thessalonica, uh, Christians for, for Galatia and Titus for uh, Dalmata, Dalmatia, so, so if you love the world, then you're rejecting Christ. It, it just goes that way. If, if you love Christ, then you're going to reject the way the world thinks. And, and there's nothing in between. You can't ride the, you know, ride the fence on this. 
You, you're either going to serve God or you're going to serve the world and serve the devil. You know, the Bible does say that Satan is the God of this world. This is, today isn't one of those woohoo days. This is a wake up day. We need to wake up and, and, and think about what the world's trying to do to us. We, we can't keep our eyes on the world and, and live for God. Lot's wife, she looked back and what happened to her? She became a pillar of salt. She, she, God pulled Lot and his family out of Sodom and Gomorrah because of their sins. And their sin was sodomy. Their sin was homosexuality. That was what, what caused destruction. That's what's going to bring judgment in this earth. When we get raptured up, God's wrath is going to be dealing with those who, who love unrighteousness. We can share Jesus with people now. Let's get people saved. Let's get people healed. Let's get people set free. <coughs> Amen? Amen? Once the rapture happens, then there's 144,000 Jewish evangelists that will rise up. But we're already there. We need to do what we can do now. What can we do? And so, so um, you know, Lot's wife, you know, she was out of Sodom, but it wasn't out of her. See, our bodies end up where our minds take them. And that's the thing. You can be indoctrinated. And that's what the world's trying to do. They're trying to indoctrinate you. That's, that's what Hitler did. He tried to indoctrinate. You know? That's, you, you indoctrinate the younger generation, they grow up and they change. And so we don't want to be indoctrinated with the things of the world. We want to be indoctrinated with the Word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. In Hebrews 11, 15 through 16, it says, And truly... If they had called to mind the country from which they had come out. And that country was not a good country. They left a, a, a country where they worshipped different gods and different things like that. It says they would have had an opportunity to return if they had thought about it. If, if, if their mind was set on the things of that country, they would have had an opportunity to return to that country. But their mind was on something else. It was on God. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. But now they have a better desire. That is a heavenly country. Therefore God is not ashamed to be called their God. For he has prepared a city for them. See, we're, the, the enemy is trying to indoctrinate us. The media is trying to indoctrinate us. If you believe everything on the news, and I'm talking even Fox News, if you believe everything, you're going to be deceived because they are not telling you the truth. I don't know if you, if you realize it, but they make up news. There's, there's fake news out there. There's, there are people that are crisis actors. They've caught them. They've caught crisis actors. Where in, in this crisis, they play one part. And then another crisis happens, and they look a little bit different, but there they are again. How do they end up in two different places, two different sides of the country? Because... They're planted there. We see. We think that everything, you know, on Fox News, you know, is good, and everything on CNN is bad. I'm just here to tell you they're all owned by by the liberal people out there, and they're all trying to shape us. One one shaping us this way, and the other one shaping us that way, and they're trying to, you know, herd us into the middle. And, and so, you know, I mean. Let's just look at what society's... What, what are they putting out there? What's the media putting out there as far as with movies and stuff? Cannibalism is a big thing. They, they have um, spirit cooking. I'm talking movie stars go to this. And, and what it is, is it's, it's uh, I don't know, something that someone makes that looks like a human body and they start eating parts from it. Yeah, that's, this is real stuff. It's nasty. Cannibalism. They're, they're trying to bring cannibalism into the forefront. You know, that's what witches do. They eat human flesh. You know? I mean, Hansel and Gretel wasn't just, you know, just a little story tale. It, 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 it's what Satanists do. Satanists are cannibals. They're cannibals. It's bad. And, and, and they, they sacrifice. This is real life stuff. We need to wake up. I mean, they have movies out, Zombie Nation. Anyone ever hear of the Zombie Nation? Or, or uh, what's the latest one? Oh, yeah, 
the Santa Clarita Diet, where it's about it's supposed to be a comedy, where you know I guess Hop um, Drew Barrymore, she's a a zombie and she's going around just eating people. That's comedy, you know. That that's what the world sees as comedy. This is just. It's all, all the, the nasty stuff has been in the dark is starting to come up to the front, yeah. coming up to the surface. They're trying to indoctrinate the world into, into that. I'm telling you, it's not good. Bruce Jenner, transgenderism. You can be a woman if you want to be a woman, guys. You know, right? If you decide you want to be a woman, just be a woman. Just take the hormones. Now, if you were born a man, you're always going to be a man. If you if you were born with, you know, last time I said this, I, I heard some things. I was I said if you have a uterus, you're a woman. If you don't, you're a man. Well, no, if you were born with a uterus, okay, you're a woman. Amen. Because I understand some women have, have things taken out. Okay, you're still a woman. All right, <laughs> no fears, no fears. But. Uh, you know, you, you, you can make the outside look a certain way, but that doesn't mean that, that you, you know, that you change your gender, mm -hmm. you know. You, you just are deceptive if you do that, you know. And so our bodies end up where our minds take them. You know, what else is out there in the media? Aliens. There's alien movies everywhere. They're, they're trying to get us to think, well, you know, there's life out there on other planets. And so, you know, ultimately, they want to deceive the world. The, and there, we've even had presidents saying that, you know what? Uh, if, if we were invaded by aliens, that all the world would, would come together and, and be one. Well, isn't that what they're trying to do? They're trying to bring the world together? So, so they're feeding us all these space movies all these alien movies, they're trying to get the world to, to be open to an alien invasion. There's, there's actually a project called Project Bluebeam. And, and what they do is they have holographic images. And they can make something look, they can make an elephant come out of the floor. And you would think it was a real elephant or a well or, or whatever. You can actually, that they, they've gotten so good with the holographs that, that they're going to, I believe, going to open up the door where people think that they're, we're going to be invaded by aliens. You know? So then we need a savior. That opens the door for an antichrist to unify the world. I'm just saying that these things are, are being taught. These things are being taught in the media. They're being taught in the movies. I mean, um, the, the, the god of the Satanists is called Baphomet. Anyone ever hear of Baphomet? Nobody? Baphomet it, basically, what it is is it's it's this creature with a, a goat's head, a female torso, and then male parts. So it's 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 a blend of male and female and a goat. It's it's nasty, and they worship that. The Satanists they worship that. That's why there's you know whether you know it or not, there are people that are transgendered that we don't even know they are. You, you'd have to really, you, you can't just look at someone and say, well, that's a male and that's a female. Because you don't know whether they were transgendered in the womb, which they can do, or whether they were transgendered before puberty, which they do. Some of your stars, some of your favorite stars out there might be a lot different than what you think they are. I'm just saying. There's, there's, there's a... a a really crazy thing. It's crazy. I mean, the, the days of, uh, Jesus said the days of Noah was the, the, that them days would show up when he's going to return. Well, the days of Noah was whenever the sons of God went into the daughters of men and they had creatures. Men of renown. Nephilim. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that term. These are the real things I'm talking about. And, and, you know, but, you know, if you're asleep, you're going to look at it and go, what's he talking about? This is all Greek. I'm just saying it's time for us to wake up. 
Because they messed around with, with the, the, the human beings back then. And Noah was the only, him and his family, they were the only ones that were pure. And uh, God saved them. You know? This, I know this sounds like the outer limits. You know? The Tower of Babel all over again. But, but you know, society is trying to make us, you know, see God in a different way. They're trying to feminize God. Think about that. The, their God is the Baphomet. Half man, half woman. And a goat. But, but, but then, you know, they actually have Bibles out there that feminize God. There's a movie that a lot of Christians went to go see. The Shack. The Shack. There you go, yeah. And what, what they're doing is they are making you begin to consider that God may be a woman. Although the Word of God clearly says He. You know? He made man in His image. And in his likeness. And, and so, you know, movies like The Shack and other ones, um, that, you know, there, and there's other things wrong with The Shack, but we won't go there. But, uh, because that's not where I'm headed. But, but you can see how, how they're trying to feminize even God. They're changing, they're trying to change everything. We need to realize that. We need to understand that. Friendship with the world makes us enemies with God. Adulterers, adulterers, in James 4, 4 says, Adulterers, adulterers, do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore wants to be a friend of the world makes himself an enemy of God. So the question we got to ask is, do we laugh at what the world laughs at? Do we go where the world goes? Do we talk and dress like the world <laughs> You know, the world standards, they're always changing. And, and they're, they're not changing for the better. You know, bathing suits. I, I think that, that, you know, that they should give women discounts on their bathing suits because they're giving them less material. You know? I mean, it surely has to cost them less money, but they charge them an arm and a leg. You know? Even men, some of their bathing suits, I, you know... But we won't go all into that. But just, just food for thought. You, you know, we were trying to buy shorts for Hannah a while back, and we couldn't find. They were like, you, you couldn't hardly find any decent shorts. And uh, they're just not in style. They're not in the world style. So, you know, it's just something that we need to realize. That we need to, to over, you know, really realize what's going on. They're trying to shape us. In Romans chapter 12, verse 2, it says, Do not be conformed to this world. Do not be conformed to the world. But to be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you might prove what is the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. The world is trying to conform us, is trying to shape us, is trying to put thoughts in our minds. It's trying to make us accept the things that it wants to promote. Just think about this. If, if um, you know, there are, there are stars out there, movie stars and, that are transgendered, but no one really knows it. You'd have to look up some things like uh, rebooting Christianity or, or transvestigations to, to really get a, an understanding of what's going on. And um, so what would happen if is you have your favorite star, and all of a sudden you find out that she is no, is really a he. Are you, are you going to be like accepting that? What if what if all of those stars came out all at one time? Just saying. I'm not saying everyone in Hollywood is that way, but there's a lot of them, and you need to realize that. See, the spirit of this world will defile and callous our consciences toward God and His holiness. In Isaiah 5, verse 20, it says, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness. That's, that's what the world's trying to do. They're, they're trying to say, oh, this is good. You know, God didn't make you right so, so we can remake you. We'll make you a woman if you want to be a woman. 
and, or we'll make you a man if you want to be a man. We have the capabilities to make you whatever we want to make you. Shaping you. You know? It's a good thing. Gender fluidity is a good thing. No, it's not. God knew what He was doing when He made us. Amen? Amen. I mean, and, and you know, movies from the past, you know, the Harry Potters, the Twilights, the Vampires, perverse movies and lust, sex, murder, pretty little liars, sex in the city, we, we all knew way back when with the Broback Mountain, that shocked people. Now people are shocked about that stuff. So, you know, it's just part of the, the deal. You know, um, you know, here's the thing though. We fellowship. When we, when we put them on our television, what we're doing is we're fellowshipping with them. We're feeding off of them. We, we bring people into our houses through the television that we would never let in through the front door. We would never let them in our house through the front door. We're, but what you're doing is you're channeling them in to your life. Oh, well, let me change the channel. Amen. I can channel this other thing or whatever. The, the enemy has, has, you know, he's called the, the, the prince of the power of the air. Well, he's got the airwaves in a lot of ways. And he's shaping us, you know. We don't want to be channeling the world into our lives by television, movies, and music. I mean, yes, it's impossible to completely avoid it all, okay. But, but you don't have to go constantly seeking it everywhere. You know, we know about when the children of Israel went into the promised land and uh, they were told not to, to take any of the defiled things into their, their houses. Anyone remember the guy named Achan? What did he do? He took the accursed things back to his tent. He took the things that God wanted to destroy back to his tent. In Joshua 7.11, it says, Israel has sinned and has also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things and have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Their own stuff. See, the devil wants us numb so he can operate on us. 1 Timothy 4. 1 and 2, it says, Now the Spirit expressly says that in the latter time some will depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. That's what the enemy's trying to do. He's trying to seduce us. He's trying to sear our conscience so that, so that things that at one time would shock us, they're like, oh, you know, it's, that's just the way it is. I mean, if, back in the 50s, if, if they, these movies would never even come out, they would have... Close them down. I remember when rated PG movies were were not so bad, and now they're, 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 they became the rated R movies, and the rated R movies have become the rated X movies. You know, it, it's just they're brainwashing us. You know, people like superheroes. You know, and that's great, but then you have the X Men. What are they doing? It's messing with the the person. They have technology to, to clone people, whether you believe it or not. They do. It's out there. They're not just cloning sheep. Just saying. Sounds crazy, but it's true. You know, how do you boil a frog? You put it in cold water and you just turn up the heat just slowly. That's what they've done to us. But now they're just throwing us into boiling water. See, our conscience is only reliable if it's good and sensitive to God. Our, the devil is after our conscience. He's trying to defile our conscience. He's trying to make us numb to, to the things of God. You know, if, if you're numb, not only are you going to accept the things of the world, but you're also not going to be sensitive to God. You're not going to hear His voice. You're not going to be able to, 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 to be open to the things of the Spirit. In, in the Amplified Bible, in Luke chapter... 11 verse 34 says your eyes your eye is the lamp of your body when your eye your conscience is sound and fulfilling its office when your conscience is doing what it's supposed to be doing your whole body is full of light but when it is not sound and is not fulfilling its office 
Your body is full of darkness. Basically, your body is going to go where your conscience lets it go. If your conscience is defiled by the world and you're insensitive to, to just the nastiness out there, then you're going to end up in it. Eventually, your body's going to end up where your mind takes it. I know this is not one of the most fun messages. You know? But we need to hear it. See, our conscience is our spiritual immune system. If, if, you have, if your immune system is messed up, if your immune system isn't working properly, then, then you have problems. You have situations. Multi, multiple sclerosis. It's because the immune system's attacking the body. It's messed up. Um, Parkinson's disease and all these other diseases. When the immune system is not healthy, the body is not healthy. The person is not healthy. Well, our conscience is our spiritual immune system. And if our conscience is messed up, if our conscience is, is no longer sensitive to the things of God, if our conscience is no longer sensitive to hearing the Word of God, hearing from the Spirit of God, then we're going to be all messed up. And that's what the purpose is of this world. They're trying to do this. In Hebrews chapter 5, 11 through 14, it says, of whom we have much to say and hard to explain. Since you have become dull of hearing. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you yourself need someone to teach you again the first or the very basic principles of the oracles of God. And you have come need of milk and not solid food. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their conscience have, have, or have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil or right and wrong. Where are our senses at as a church? You know, where, where are they at? The big churches, they're, they're letting anything happen. Anything's happening in them. I mean, that's, that's why a lot of them are so, so big. Because they just, you know... They're seeker sensitive. So basically what seeker sensitive is, is seeker sensitive is if it's going to offend the world, then the world's not going to come. So we need to come down to where the world is so we can just fill the place full of the world. I mean, they won't say it like that, but that's what it is. Because if you start preaching right and wrong, you start preaching against the things of this world, it's going to offend somebody. And when it offends somebody, they're going to go down the road to the big church that, that they accept everything. They're, they're sensitive to the world or the secret. See, our immune system, if it's not working properly, our body gets full of sickness. If our conscience isn't working properly, our, our, our life gets full of sin, full of perverseness, full of the world. So our conscience must, it must be calibrated. To the word of God. A sound conscience is calibrated by sound doctrine. You need sound doctrine. It says here, um, you know, and, and what does calibrate mean? It means to check, adjust, or determine with a standard. That's You use a standard to calibrate something. And our standard is the word of God. This is our standard. So we need our conscience calibrated to what God says in His Word. But the world's trying to calibrate us to its standards. To accept its standards. We need, we need to have our mind thinking the way God thinks. His, his, his ways are higher than our ways. His thoughts are, are higher than our thoughts. 1 Timothy 1.19 says, Having faith and a good conscience, which some, having rejected concerning the faith, have suffered shipwreck. Faith and a good conscience. That's what we need. If there, I've seen so many Christians with shipwrecked lives. That they, they've gone into the world. That they, they do what the world does. That they live under the world's culture. Their light is, is put out. And, and they become shipwrecked. They're a mess. A shipwreck is when, when, when a ship hits into a rock or something. And all the, the contents of the ship are just scattered everywhere. It's just a mess. And that's the way a lot of Christians are in the day that we're living. 
Because they've allowed their, their conscience to get defiled. And then they wonder why their lives are a mess. I'm here to tell you today, we as a church, we are not going to let that happen. Amen? We are going to keep our minds focused on the Word of God. We're going to be thinking God's thoughts. We're going to be putting Jesus first. Amen? Amen. Let's put Jesus first. Okay. And, and, and when we do that, we're going to be that light and that salt in the world. Amen? Amen. You know, when, when we're salt to the world, sometimes they think we're assaulting them. You know, they do. They, they think that we're coming against them. But here's the thing. They are actually assaulting us. Persecution. You know, maybe we're not getting persecuted enough because we're not bright enough. Maybe. I don't know. You know, I mean, some people just aren't going to like you because your light is shining. Amen? <laughs> See, just like a compass points north, our conscience must, must be calibrated always to point to the Word of God. That's where our conscience needs to be calibrated, the Word of God. If it's not calibrated to the Word of God, then you're going to go off course. You're not going to end up at where, where, you're, where God wants you to be. See, a good conscience will keep us from becoming shipwrecked. See, in this Babylonian world, that's what will happen. It'll keep us from being shipwrecked in this Babylonian world and protect us from the seducing spirits of this world. So I'm here to encourage you today, uh, after I woke you up, there's, there's crazy things going on. And a lot of times we're blind to it. We need to stay focused on God, stay focused on His Word. Walk in love. Amen? Bless people. Help people. Let the Word of God Rule in your heart. Amen? Amen. And, and let, let the peace of God rule in your heart. Like an umpire. But we need, we need to, 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 to have a standard. Not the world standard, but a standard to live by. Amen? Amen. And I just realized I forgot to let you share about Gideon's here. So I'm going to pray real quick, and then I'm going to give you an opportunity to come up here real quick and share that. Amen? Sorry about that. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come to you in the very precious name of Jesus. And Lord, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing. Lord, we thank you that you are so faithful and true. And Lord, we just place our hearts and our conscience in the very palm of your hands. We, we thank you for your goodness. We thank you, Lord, for helping us to think your thoughts and, and to walk in your ways. And we give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to come up. Here's the thing.